On July the 5th, Keir Starmer officially became the new Prime Minister in the United Kingdom. Bloomberg writes that his rhetoric against Beijing is harsher than that used by the previous Conservative administration of Rishi Sunak. Now, according to the head of the Strategic Review of Britain's defence potential, George Robertson, Russia and China are on the list of countries that are mortal threats to the United Kingdom and the entire North Atlantic Alliance. In the format of some kind of reconnaissance in battle against the West, Russia can sell itself to China. And as we see, this position of the Federation does not frighten China. It satisfies it. And they are increasing interdependence to one degree or another. But this is very one-sided interdependence that leaves Russia ranked much lower than China. In recent years, Beijing and Moscow have strengthened their military and trade ties, and right now they've begun naval exercises with live firing in the South Chinese Sea. China's state-run Global Times newspaper said countries should deploy at least three ships for the three-day exercise. From a military point of view, China has rather limited military experience due to the fact that the army has not fought anywhere. And with such a size, it is quite difficult to disseminate the experience of even those small missions in which China participated. Then Russia, which has this experience and has positioned itself throughout its existence as a state with such a clear emphasis on the military sphere, seems to be such an interesting complementary ally for China. Russia strives to be a useful partner for China. Reuters writes that the Russian Federation may transfer to Beijing data about American weapons used on the battlefields in Ukraine. And although Washington sees a rapprochement between the two states, it still does not lose hope that China can influence Moscow to stop military actions against the Ukrainian state. We have seen, as you said, um, further relationship between uh, China and Russia, and it's not just with respect to revitalizing the defense industrial base, it is also with respect to being a major strategic partner of Russia. When we have talked directly to the Chinese government, we have said that ultimately we would hope that they could play a productive role in, in the conflict, but it needed to be a role that recognized who was the aggressor and who was the victim. And it was not just getting peace for peace sake, but also getting peace that was a just peace and a lasting peace for the state of Ukraine. Let us remind you that the Chinese authorities officially take a neutral position regarding Russia's war against Ukraine. At the same time, Beijing helps the Kremlin regime by supplying components for weapons production. Moreover, China also purchases oil and gas from the Federation at dumping prices, while the aggressive country is under Western sanctions. Reported by Diana Kolesnik, Nikita Skoblikov, UATV News.